Good morning, South America. Good afternoon, Europe. Welcome to the Listo Project webinar series. This is part three of the whole series. Uh, we started two weeks ago with a webinar about AIM Day and how we connect universities with companies and businesses. Last week, we talked about the international virtual classroom developed by the Listo Consortium. And today we're going to go even bigger. We're going to talk about how to strengthen the entrepreneurial spirit of universities. And we're going to talk about entrepreneurial universities. What is that and how can you strengthen that if you want to do that? Uh, my name is Philipp Bauer. I work in the Division for Internationalization at Uppsala University in Sweden. I'm the project coordinator of Listo and I have been had the pleasure to run and work with this group for the past three years. I'm going to introduce you to the agenda of today and a couple of uh, rules for the webinar. So the rules are that you have the chat function on the side. This is for communication between the participants. If you would like to ask questions directed at the panelists that we will have during the webinar, you can do this in the Q&A section. And this is, will allow us to get a question and then I, as the moderator, will direct them at the panelist when it's time uh, for the Q&A sessions. I have a co-host, her name is Fanny Jonsson. She's one of my colleagues in the office and she will help me in the background. So if you have questions about the platform, about how we do everything here, then you can message her and you can also see her right now um, as the co-host uh, of the webinar. Uh, if you are using social media and would like to communicate about what we do here, we have an Instagram account at Listo Project and we use the hashtag Listo Project to um, connect us on, on various platforms. Um, this is our agenda for today. Um, first, we will introduce you to what we did in this topic of entrepreneurial university. Then we will present a model that we developed together, what we call the MESAVA approach. Um, then we will have a panel with three of my uh, South American colleagues, one from Argentina, one from Brazil, and one from Uruguay, to discuss um, how we as universities become more, more entrepreneurial. And then at the end of the webinar, we will, list, we will launch a toolkit, the list of toolkit for entrepreneurial universities, which is sort of a summary of the activities um, that we did in this part of the project. Um, I will now bring on a colleague of mine. Um, and once I've done that, I will introduce her to you. Okay, there she is. Welcome, Carolina Delgado. She's a facilitator and teacher at the University of Valladolid in Spain and specifically at the Science Park there. She was one of the uh, leaders in the project and the, in this, this part of the project, Entrepreneurial University, she was one of the persons who was, was very engaged. Uh, her and me together will introduce in a few minutes um, the approach that we used in the Listo project to talk about this huge topic, entrepreneurial university, uh, before we then look into some of the details, some of the, the aspects um, that we dealt with. Okay. okay. Carolina, uh, let me just say a few words about the background. So uh, LISTO is the Latin American and European Corporation Innovation Entrepreneurship. It's an Erasmus Plus capacity building project running from 2017 until 2020. We're officially ending next week. We had three focus areas, university industry collaboration. That was the topic of webinar one. Then the second one was entrepreneurship education and the international virtual classroom that we developed. And the third one was entrepreneurial university. This is the topic of today's webinar. The first two areas or work packages within the logic of an Adaskos Plus project were very much very hands-on. They were very practical in the sense that we tested a tool, we developed a virtual classroom, entrepreneurial university was a huge work package and a huge topic and that required different methods. 
Um, these are our partners, and this is where I give the word to Carolina, and she will introduce you to what we did together. Thank you, Thank you Philip. Philip. Thank you for organizing this amazing webinar. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning, Latin America, and good afternoon from the sunny city of Segovia, one of the four campuses of Valladolid University. As Philip said, I am Carolina Delgado, speaking on behalf of the science part. Uh, we are here to, to celebrate uh, the things that bring us together and to describe to you the roadmap and the result that we have reached. I would like to, to briefly present to you the way that this amazing list of things has worked in this work package, which is called uh, looking for the entrepreneurial spirit of our universities. Firstly, with the list of things, we, we work together to agree on and design its own methodology for working together, uh, which take into account some relevant practices from the strategic plan of each of the partners. To reach our objective and looking for what we want to be as an entrepreneurial university, not only should we set the how, but also the what. So, we came up with our own definition of an entrepreneurial university, taking into account, as I said, best practices and essential elements, and based on the indicator of the strategic plan presented in our last in-person meeting in Valladolid City. And we found that, for the list of things, to be a much more entrepreneurial university is related to all these features, as you can see in the slides. And also, you can find this uh, co-created definition in our toolkit. Secondly, we complete a detailed, an amazingly detailed survey with, when we analyze topics related to resources, um, management ecosystem, and dissemination plan. While the items were compared with the international, with the with the internal organization, the surrounded ecosystem, and the teaching of entrepreneurship. And besides that, we managed to analyze some transversal issues which are related to funding and the use of ICTs. Firstly, this all collaborative information with, with, with all this collaborative information, we, we completed an amazingly detailed SWOT, which was a great tool to allow us to view a snapshot on our best practices and see it in a new perspective. Uh, let me tell you that it was also a great exercise for looking at another department and unit in detail. Through this, uh, we discovered some elements which are in our control and other that can be planned for, but we don't have any control over because they are external. Um, the, that questionnaire was addressed to the partnership and they complete in order to improve the information that we have at the moment and to investigate in detail what features, advantages, uh, abilities, resources, and operation we have in our, in our universities. Also, uh, list of team include in this, anal in this analysis uh, threat and opportunities, where the tendency is also to have less control because, as I say, are external to, to our partner, but we include in that, in that information. Um, the significance of list of working approach, of the significance of all the work that we done, we are, we have done by 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 list of team, was that finally we came up with a, a descriptive uh, a descriptive plan that allows allowed us to, as you can read, uh, identify successful strategies to become much more entrepreneurial with activities and training develop and build our strength and share how, make the most of the amazing opportunities in our local and regional environment, 
and reduce, tr trying, trying to reduce the threat in, a, in the long term and provide uh, internationalization to the endeavors. And lastly, eliminate weaknesses altogether through this uh, interchanging of best practices. And finally, uh, in, a, in, in our last virtual exchange due to the pandemic, uh, we organized discussion groups around the presentive challenge. And in the last session, we established some recommendations which bring together the different strategies that we are implementing at our universities related to becoming a much more entrepreneurial uh, university. Uh, and finally, uh, I would like to, to sum up telling you that there is more that unites us than divides us. And that was one of the, of the uh, significant sentences for, for our list of team. Gracias. Uh, thank you. That was, that was a nice conclusion. It's more that unites us. Um, I think uh, a lot of us will subscribe to that. We will now go a bit into the details. This was the general overview. This was our approach. This was sort of the, the overview that we can show you. And now we will look into one of the models. Uh, just a quick look at the participants. We have now 66 participants, which is a very nice number. Welcome, everybody. I would like to mention one special guest, Alejandra Davizioc from the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation in Argentina. The ministry was an associate partner in the project. Um, one of their uh, colleagues, uh, Diego Galliano, joined us at the kickoff meetings three years ago. So it's nice that you're with us again now that we conclude the list of project. I will now bring um, to the panel um, um, another colleague. Uh, give me a moment and then I will introduce him to you. For now, thank you, Carolina. Thank you to you. Please, uh, please mute yourself. So. Um, Thanks. So we are bringing online uh, Professor Jose Ribeiro. He is the Senior Technological Development Officer and Director of the CEDETEC Innovation and Tech Transfer Office at the Federal University Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. Um, they were very kind to host us for the kickoff meeting three years ago. And uh, Professor Ribeiro um, was one of the um, partners who was very involved in this general topic of entrepreneurial university. He will now present to you what we call the Mesa Va model. This is sort of a result of the discussions that we had internally in the project. Welcome, Professor Ribeiro. Um, I will now stop sharing my screen so you can start sharing yours. We have about 15 minutes for the discussion, uh, for the presentation, excuse me, and then about 10 minutes for questions. So you can post those questions already during the presentation and we will collect them and then um, address them um, after the presentation. Okay, now you're ready to share your screen. Okay, Philip, thank you by introducing me. Uh, are you seeing my screen? Not yet, no. Not yet. Okay, just a minute. Share. Now it's appearing? Yes, now we can see it. Great, go. Okay. So let's talk about the list to Mesavar approach for fostering entrepreneurial spirit in university. Uh, as Carolina was talking a, a moment earlier, entrepreneurial universities empower staff and students for innovation and entrepreneurship. They are committed to creating public value via process of engagement and exchange with all the stakeholders in society on a local, national, or international basis. But how an organization can move towards a, an entrepreneurial university? This is a tough question, and maybe we can help a little bit with the Mesavar approach. 
The list to meet our approach presents the essential elements for entrepreneurial university. This approach can be used to achieve a better understanding of the aspects involved in entrepreneurship, to subsidize action plans, as a checklist to identify gaps, or as a guide for a comprehensive assessment. The list to meet our approach for fostering entrepreneurial spirit in university is composed by 50 essential elements plus 10 KPIs. The 50 essential elements are organized in five balanced dimensions in such a way that each dimension embraces the 10 most important elements in their respective field. While the 10 KPIs are presented as a sixth dimension, then these dimensions are presented next. The six dimensions are one, align the mindset, two, prepare the environment, three, engage all stakeholders, four, conduct the actions, five, deliver value for stakeholders, and six, measure results. The elements of the three first dimensions, align the mindset, prepare the environment, engage stakeholders, are necessary for conducting the actions, which will deliver value for the stakeholders. Then the use of KPIs, measure results, will provide the feedback to adjust and improve the actions. Next, the elements selected for each of the six dim dimensions, including the chosen KPIs, are, are presented and briefly discussed. Align the mindset for involves establishing an organizational culture conducive to the entrepreneurial spirit. This is achieved by reinforcing some elements as true values of the organization. The 10 essential elements of, uh, or values selected to comprise this first dimension are presented next. The reinforcement of these values welcomes and allow the entrepreneurial spirit to flourish at the university. Change, implying movement and doing, is at the heart of the entrepreneurs. Out of the box thinking to establish successful disruptive ventures, transdisciplinarity, collaboration, and co creation to facilitate the development of solid business solutions, a risk taking attitude to pursue new and disruptive solutions. Sustainability as a core value in a world that can no longer support social or environmental damage. Internationalization, global local thinking, and the desire to transform the world to ensure that high impact ventures will be pursued. And finally, R&D and innovation reminds us that research alone is not enough. It needs to be developed to reach the market and to be labeled as an innovation bring a meaningful contribution for society. Prepared environment comprises a set of elements to be planned and implemented to allow the harmonious operation of an entrepreneurial university. The 10 essential elements selected to support this dimension are presented next. Attention to these elements is needed to welcome and allow the entrepreneurial spirit to flourish at university. First, top management commitment facilitates everything else. Then, governance and supporting policies are central elements necessary to lead the journey towards an entrepreneurial university. Networking provides quick answer for problems entrepreneurs will certainly face. Funding is necessary to cover the expenses of the ecosystem or solve cash flow problems. Organizational capacity to cope with ecosystem management and operation. Qualified innovation staff for running training programs and ensuring support for new ventures. Infrastructure as co-working spaces, equipment and labs to conduct the actions. Qualified mentoring provides fast development and greater value for business propositions. And finally, communication channels to hold the stakeholders connected and informed. Engage stakeholders is the third dimension. This is not an easy task because entrepreneurship ecosystems have many stakeholders. The 10 essential stakeholders are presented next. 
attention to these stakeholders is crucial for the proper function of the ecosystem. Administration must be engaged because it enables or facilitates many actions. Students at all levels are also key stakeholders as they propose and conduct new ventures. Researchers afford the raw material for entrepreneurs in the form of new technologies, new methods, new algos. Teachers and mentors provide knowledge and guidance to potential entrepreneurs. University staff is there to support R&D and innovation ecosystem activities. Alumni, if engaged, may support new ventures through funding or mentoring. Industry can help in many ways, providing seed money for relevant startups or being a partner in the production and distribution of new products. Funding agencies provide money for R&D and incubated companies. Society demands, endorses, and benefits from the new ventures. And government issues incentive policies and is especially interested in the spreading of new competitive business. These first three dimensions are essential to prepare the mind, the environment, and the stakeholders for action. On the other hand, the fourth dimension, conduct the actions, is where things happen. Regarding the, the, this dimension, the selected 10 essential actions are, first, courses comprise the offering of a comprehensive entrepreneurial training program. Challenges, such as hackathons, encourage students and researchers to participate. Events promoting success stories, connecting actors, and attracting new participants. International projects fostering global thinking and scalable solutions. University industry collaboration for qualifying R&D activities and partnership for viable ventures. Protection of IP assuring that all knowledge generated by the ecosystem will be protected by law and available for new business. Technological transfer and knowledge transfer reinforcing the partnership with public and private organizations and achieving mutual benefits. Startup support provided by incubators and mentors ensuring a higher rate of success. Spin-off support offering the conditions and incentives for the emergence of companies derived from labs and technological parks. Five, deliver value for stakeholders, the fifth dimension, brings together the elements that justify the ecosystem existence. The 10 selected elements which should guide ecosystem activities are explained next. First, better professionals is a value delivered by the ecosystem because entrepreneurial training develops a series of skills which contribute to superior performances in any job. Entrepreneurial professional is another relevant value because through entrepreneurial training, a greater number of entrepreneurs will generate their own new companies providing more jobs and technological programs, which are important values for society. Startups launched by these entrepreneurs can offer better products and services, solution to social problems, solutions to environmental problems, which are also relevant values delivered by the ecosystem. In addition, these new companies generated an increase in gross domestic product that benefits society as a whole. Finally, the establishment of inspiring workplaces also stands out as a relevant value helping to change working conditions and people's relationship with work for the better. Six, sixth dimension measure results comprises a set of 10 key process indicators selected for tracking the progress towards an enduring entrepreneurial university. The set comprises three process-oriented KPIs and seven resulted-oriented KPIs. People impacted by courses, challenges, and events measures the effort made in training and providing knowledge to potential entrepreneurs. Capacity of tech parks or incubators measures the potential of the ecosystems concerning the launch of new ventures. Current number of incubated companies assess how we are exploiting this potential. Startups derived from the university in the last five years 
measures our efficiency in transforming incipient business proposals into real companies. The post of patents in the last five years evaluates the volume of our R&D activities, while patents granted in the last years appraises the quality of these activities. Money received in royalties in the last five years informs us if our R&D activities are market-oriented and valued by the business partners. Contracts with external companies in the last five years measure if you, our activities are comprehensive, able to attract many partners, while money contracted with external companies in the last five years reveals the size and value attributed to the university industry collaboration. Finally, the impact in the local economy, in spite of being difficult to, to access, is an essential measure of value for society and usually crucial for sustaining the funding flow. Okay, these are the, this is a picture which presents in a compact way the 50 essential elements related to environment, related to deliver value, related to conduct the actions, and please the six, uh, the six dimension, which is about measuring results, the KPIs. Well, this is the list to mes of our approach for fostering entrepreneurial spirits in university, and I would like to thank you for the opportunity to present it. Okay, thank you very much, Ribeiro. We now have uh, some time for questions. Um, so this is the opportunity for our attendees to, to ask questions about the approach, about how and why we built it, or maybe what you can do with it. Um, since we don't have a question so far, maybe that's a question I would like to direct at you. Um, this is a very comprehensive model with a lot of elements. What will you, in your case um, of Urgis, what, how would you use it in the university? Okay, I would say that there is uh, two different levels of using of this model. If you start in the process of uh, being an entrepreneurial university, it can be used as a checklist. It can be used as an assessment instrument to, to review the gaps, to review the opportunities for improvement. Uh, by the other side, if you are already in a, in a higher level, if you already have an entrepreneurial university and you can do a, a better, you can use it as a guide for your strategic year plan. Mm -hmm. One of the aspects that I think characterized the list of projects that we had very diverse universities. We had big public universities. I think your university is a representative of that. We had smaller private universities. So we had very different profiles. Um, this model, how does it fit different types of universities? How would you see this? Yeah, it was constructed in the scenario that you, have, that you are describing right now. Uh, so the, the, ten, the 10 essential elements in each of the dimensions covers uh, issues that are relevant for larger or smaller university, public or private universities. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have two questions. The first one comes from Panuvan. What is the most challenging KPI to achieve? What is the most difficult one in your experience? Oh, very good question, very good question. Well, I think the, the most challenging and, and also the most important would be the number of contracts with industry because it will uh, demonstrate, it will reveal that the university is indeed collaborating with industry. And that's the, the beginning for everything else and also the money for everything else. So if there is something to be, to be, uh, to be uh, this, uh, how can I say, something that I would say that is the most important to be the contracts with companies. Mm -hmm. Another question from Elip is, do you have a list of good examples for each element? The toolkit, the, the toolkit, the list of toolkit has uh, many examples of, of what can be done 
in each of the dimensions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not going to answer that now because we're going to keep that for the end of the webinar. Uh, we have a toolkit uh, with examples and we're going to talk about that at, at the end of the, of the webinar. Okay, good. Uh, thanks a lot, Ribeiro, uh, for this presentation. Um, we will now move on to a panel discussion um, to look at maybe some more contextualization of this topic. Give me one moment again to bring on the panelists and then we will continue. Okay, I would like to introduce to you three um, list of partners who have senior roles at their university. The first one is uh, Daniel Persicante. He is the Vice Rector for Research and Innovation at Universidad Católica del Uruguay. The second one is Marcos Martín. He's the head of the Ausbeen Innovation Agency at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And the third panelist is Franco Francisca. He's the Undersecretary for Innovation, Transfer and Technological Linkage at Universidad Nacional de Córdoba in Argentina. All three of them have a senior role within the innovation and entrepreneurship system at their university. And the question that uh, we would like to give to them, post to them is how can universities become more entrepreneurial? That is a huge question. But what we've decided is that we will focus on a few aspects that come sort of out of the list of contexts, out of the discussions that we had in the project. And uh, we discussed that um, these answers will also reflect, represent in a way, three partner countries in, in South America. Welcome Daniel, Marcos and Franco, and you decide who is going first. Hello to everyone. If no problem, I can start. Okay, Daniel, we go top to bottom then, yes. Okay, great. First of all, thank you very much for the invitation to be part of the panel. Uh, it is very good to be here and it's been a great experience to be part of the project as a whole, not just today. Um, how can universities become more entrepreneurial? It's a, as you said, Philip, a very huge question. Uh, and probably there is not just one answer. I will try to give mine from my perspective as part of the top management of, of my university. Uh, I think the, the first thing uh, is to recognize that being more entrepreneurial is important. Uh, if not, any, anything we do is uh, useless. When top management of a university recognizes that uh, being more entrepreneurial university is important, things start to happen. Uh, and that is what is started to happen in our university some years ago. That's why I can, I can tell you that uh, that is very, very important. Uh, and being entrepreneurial university is important for several things, I, I think students, professors, staff in the university uh, must have an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, and it is important for several things. For students, one of the things are, uh, are uh, said in the toolkit, uh, when students are entrepreneurial, they, they will become better professionals. And at the last uh, thing, what we do is to form professionals. So make them to be better professionals is, is very important. And we are convinced, I think every, every participant in the list of project is convinced uh, about that. Being entrepreneurial is very important to be a better professional. Once the top management of the university recognizes that, uh, things start to happen. Uh, but I think top management uh, 
I mean, president, vice presidents, rectors, it depends on the on every on, on each university structure. Uh, the top management must be aligned, of course, but I think alignment is not enough. Uh, top management must push things to happen. Of course, this is not easy. This is very simple to say. Uh, we are very different universities. Public universities have a lot of constraints. It's not very easy to push things to happen. But when it uh, it is real, when, when top management pushes the changes, things really happen. Uh, I, I'd like to say, to, to tell you an example in, in our university. During the last two years, we, we worked on the redesign of every, every uh, academic program in the university. Uh, we really changed everything in the, in the programs from engineering, psychology, nursery, psychology, uh, dentistry, everyone, social sciences. And one of the things we included in every program in the university was entrepreneurship and innovation not just courses, but many activities that are now in, are part of every program in the university. Before that, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship were, were part just for, uh, in, in the programs for engineers and management. That's good, but not enough. Every professional must be entrepreneurial, must, be, must have the entrepreneurial uh, mindset. That's what we think in the top management of the university. And we decided to do that, to, to make innovation and, and entrepreneurship part of the core competencies of, the, of every student, of every program in our university. It, of course, it, it took a long time to, to achieve that, but from the top management, from the rector and down, we pushed everyone to, to do that. And now it is real, next year, every program of our university is starting with that mindset and uh, it will be real in, in some years. Of course, this process takes time. Uh, things don't happen from one day to the other, but uh, having the, the managers, the top managers of the university aligned and pushing, uh, pushing that to happen is the key uh, one of the key, at least, one of the key elements to, to make this real. That is our experience I wanted to share with, with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're staying with us, but this is the first round. So now we move to Sao Paulo and Marcos. Marcus, can you hear us? We can see you and your microphone is on. There you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Good morning, everybody. I'll talk briefly about two of the list of recommendations and good practices. Fortunately, Ribeiro's presentation of the Mezavar has put everything in context, making our job here much easier. Uh, the development of an inter innovative and entrepreneurial culture is a multifaceted problem. The good news is that list of recommendations deal with most of them. They are not uh, immediately ap applicable, but we'll have to deal with that. The first one I want to tell you about is the engagement of the top management. That's crucial as Danielle put rightly before. Developing an entrepreneurial culture or mindset is hard enough if you have support from the top management. Without it, you'll be in trouble. Sometimes you can be in trouble the other way around, like in my case. My boss, the rector, is so in favor of building an entrepreneurial culture that it seems like I'm never moving fast enough. Danielle put 
very well the problems we have to actually put in march change of the bureaucracy and the how an university works so pressure from above is good because it makes it happen doesn't it's not very comfortable all the time but is very efficient so i recommend that you will find a very nice good practice example of the inclusion of transdisciplinarity in the institutional development programs and statutes of UNL, Universidad Nacional del Litoral in Argentina. It's a very nice example. And that takes me to the second recommendation, which I want to address, that's transdisciplinarity, which is at the core of innovation and entrepreneurship. University of Sao Paulo is a big, we have 90,000 students and very compartmentalized university. Hindering exchange and collaboration among students of different institutes and faculties. So transdisciplinarity is a big issue for us. And we are dealing with this matter successfully, I think by creating two types of spaces where students of different areas can mingle. The first one are entrepreneurship disciplines that are not linked to a faculty or an institute, but directly linked to the provosts of undergrad studies, making those disciplines visible to all 60,000 undergrad students that we have. We have several uh, disciplines about entrepreneurship in specific areas, institutes, and faculties. And they are open to other students, but they don't feel they belong there. So they don't apply for those disciplines. That's why it's so important to have general uh, disciplines for all students. The second initiative is a co-working space for innovative and entrepreneurial activities. It is a beautiful space set up in an architectonically sexy building in the center of the main campus, which attracts lots of students of all areas. And where they find mentoring and infrastructure to develop their projects. Unfortunately, a few months after inauguration of this space, the pandemic hit us and we had to go virtual. It's still working virtually, but it's not the same. So we hope to may uh, work there again soon. You will find a beautiful good practice example of transdisciplinarity in the projetão, which means big project in Portuguese. This is an initiative of Universidade Federal de Pernambuco. And it's a wonderfully innovative and very successful project that has been running for more than 15 years now and has transdisciplinarity in its DNA. So, this is the second uh, good practice that I would like to point to you. My time must be up, Philip. Yes, excellent. Thank you. And now we move to Franco. We've received some questions already from Nigel. We will answer that afterwards. But first, Franco, and then we will go to the questions. And audience, you can put your questions into the Q&A section, and I will direct them at the three panelists afterwards. Okay, Franco, you need to unmute yourself and then you can go. So you are unmuted, but so far we cannot hear you. We can only see you.
Uh, ah, now we hear you. Say something to test. Hello, can you yes. hear me? Now we can hear you, excellent. Excellent, okay. Uh, thank you, Philippe, and hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to remark once again the relevance of the list to project in how the partner universities could learn from each other on this process and how, uh, how that can promote the innovation and entrepreneurship in our universities. From my vision, this started with the SWAT analysis that uh, recently mentioned Carolina, because uh, that allow us uh, identifying strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and in particular, from the discovery of how our partners solve a similar problem that the one that we have. And at the same time, how some of our good practices can be useful for others. In this sense, we learned a lot, and I think, I think that is a very interesting to remark that. And several recommendations were developed as they are going to be presented in the toolkit after this panel session. And let me just mention a, very briefly a, a couple of uh, good practices from Argentina, because I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. So one of the best practices that I uh, selected was uh, just mentioned by Marcos. Uh, I think that uh, the good practice and trend identified by the Universidad Nacional de Córdoba and also Universidad Nacional del Litoral, the two Argentinian universities of the Listo Consortium, is the importance of the normative at the university to favor entrepreneurship, innovation, but also technology transfer. Of course, this is a very dynamic process, in particular, if we are on the way of developing the normative and the role of top management and authorities on that is extremely important. This topic is fundamental for the motivation of professors and researchers to be involved on innovation and entrepreneurial activities. In addition to other activities as, for example, teaching, research, and social extension that are well recognized and with a long tradition in most of universities. We could start working this point with a question that any professor may have. Why I should be involved in this type of activities? How this will be considered in my regular evaluations as professor or for promotions? From this, it is very clear that without proper regulations will be extremely difficult to promote these activities and to be successful in having involved and motivated human resources working on that. In this sense, significant approaches to strengthen this point were developed by Universidad Nacional del Litoral in Argentina up to the point of including some of these topics, as well as transdisciplinarity in the institutional development program and statute of the university. Other example, in addition, it could be from Universidad Nacional de Córdoba, the different programs that we have to promote entrepreneurships. One of them is a program named LASSOS, that try to link different actors, entrepreneurs, students, graduates, professors, and staff of the university to solve one specific local problem. I think that working together in projects like LISTOS, but also other uh, university networks, is very important for the, develop for the developing of the entrepreneurial spirit in the university and with that contributing to solve society problems to reach a sustainable development.
Okay, thank you, Franco. We have received some very good and pointed questions, and I will I will um, read them out to you. So this is from Nigel. Um, so he's he's impressed and he says, "Great, but how many times have we seen a university change its top management, and the next person does not get entrepreneurship? How do you overcome this problem?" Marcos, go. Yes, I think Nigel is a bit uh, harsh on his view of uh, universities that are public like ours. We have managerial difficulties because uh, unless the regular citizen that cannot do anything that the law forbids, the, the um, people ha that work for the government, they can only do what the, the law specifically allows. So we are much more straight-jacked in our work. But even so, for instance, we are uh, making an evaluation of the companies that were formed by form form uh, students from University of Sao Paulo. And we are, we didn't finish our job yet. We are on the 1500 different uh, companies that were founded by former students. And those companies, they produce by year more than 10 billion US dollars. And generate about 15,000 uh, jobs. So our university has an entrepreneurial spirit because a lot of our former students, they went to uh, create uh, companies. From those 1,500, about 600 were incubated in our incubators. So I think Nigel is being too harsh on his question. Okay, I think you referred to the, fir the first one is about can universities actually be entrepreneurial compared to our startups? Um, but what do, what do Daniel and Franco think in terms of organizational managerial change in a university? Do you have experience with that? Okay. And how would you deal with this? Well, I, I think that uh, uh, the most important point is to have the regulations, because, of course, uh, as in many other organizations, authorities at our universities change, and also maybe their priorities. Uh, we have had uh, authority changes in, in the, uh, at the University of Cordoba in, in the last uh, 10 years, a couple of times. And we didn't have problem with that uh, when we had the regulations. But for all the, the key issues that we may are missing one rule, uh, there is where we have the big problem. So uh, intentionally or not, uh, several things may be put in the fridge uh, if you are not uh, involved with that. But that is very difficult to do if, if we are the proper normative and regulation uh, at our universities. Mm -hmm. Daniel? Yes, uh, I agree with Nigel that there is a risk, always there is a risk when the <clears throat> top management uh, changes. Uh, the policies of the university depend on, on the top management and when they change, of course, uh, there is a risk that entrepreneurship and, uh, could be, um, could have less priority. Okay, of course, it, it may happen. But uh, if the, the idea of the entrepreneurial university is, is um, 
in every part of the university if there are results about uh, what we do if, in, if sorry if what we do uh, is transformed in results in more companies in more um, better professionals uh, and it can be measured i think i really think that we can convince the new management that that is really important and uh, it should continue as a policy in the university uh, but anyway nigel is right there is a, a real risk in the changes of course franco is true when there are current regulations well maybe that helps the continuity but uh, anyway regulations may may be changed so uh, i think the what we have to do is to convince the the top management that that is important to show them results so they will be probably they will be happy to continue on uh, pushing entrepreneurship and innovation in the university okay we don't have any more questions, but maybe just to conclude a very brief review, you just mentioned you need good arguments. Can you share with our audience and with us your main striking argument when you have a meeting with your university director and what is your, your strongest argument that you would recommend just briefly as a closing round? Daniel, Marcos, and then Franco. Uh, that's that's hard <laughs> because uh, I am in charge of these these things. When I when I talk to my boss, the rector, I say, "Well, you 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 told me that I have to do that, so <laughs> I am doing my job." <laughs> but uh, I actually think that entrepreneurship and innovation is really is uh, a very important tool to to make better professionals not just to make uh, entrepreneurs uh, not every student of our university will be an entrepreneur but if they have the mindset even if they are employees they will be better professionals so that's the what we do we form professionals and marcos yes i think that our best argument is that society wants that. And it shows that it wants that by the students. They want to uh, become entrepreneurs or they are interested in that. They want, uh, society wants results from the university to get to impact society. So the tech transfer and knowledge transfer is important so that what we produce within the university gets out to the university. And the best way to do that is by startups and licensing uh, intellectual property. So I think the entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial culture is important to make the university reach society. We already reach society by putting a lot of good people, students and professionals that go out, but we can do much more than that. That's it. Okay, and the final word to Franco. Uh, well, of course I, I agree with Marcos. Uh, Probably in, in my case, uh, the most important argument is related to uh, the significant amount of needs that we have as, as a society, uh, the number of problems and difficulties that we have. So the, the, these activities are essential to find solutions to those problems. And because of we are a public university, uh, that this has to be very important for us. And this is the, the most important argument. We, we are because of society. So uh, we have to be 
very involved in fi finding solutions to the problems. Okay, thank you very much. That's a good final word. Thank you to the three of you for your uh, perspectives. Um, I would like to ask you to mute your microphones now to wave goodbye before I bring on um, our last uh, panelist. We've mentioned already several times that uh, we have prepared a toolkit with a lot of practical advice and all the recommendations that we addressed now in the panel with the Mesa Ma approach and more. And that one we would like to present to you now. I'm bringing into the Zoom room my colleague Liliani Sartorio from the University of Sao Paulo. And she will officially launch uh, a publication that summarizes our discussions. Welcome, Liliani. Thanks, Philippe. Thanks, everybody. And my name is Liliani. I am from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And it's a great pleasure being here launching this, this great job that we did together. Well, as you already know, we are, a we are LISTO, a group of 10 universities from six different countries. And our goal was to use this difference uh, between us as an opportunity to learn from each other and to develop new insights and recommendations meeting each other needs. So as webinar three is, uh, uh, in webinar three, our intention is to present strategies and recommendations from, for strengthening the entrepreneurial spirit in the university now we are here launching uh, the toolkit. So as you can see, the, the, the cover of our toolkit is in the screen. And uh, what is the toolkit? Uh, here we share our experiences and results of working together, promoting the entrepreneurial spirit in our universities. And also we are presenting strategic decision-making processes in universities to become more entrepreneurial. So the toolkit is divided in three very simple chapters. In chapter one, you can find methods and activities looking for entrepreneurial spirit in our universities. This is a set of activities and methods to analyze the entrepreneurial dimension in universities. The key of success you can find in this chapter is an open and action-oriented approach. In chapter two, the list of Mesavar approach, 50 essential elements for entrepreneurial universities. As Ribeiro presented before, a uh, Mesavar approach is used to foster entrepreneurial spirit in universities. In this chapter, uh, we combine essential elements for entrepreneurial universities to change, to real change. So, as we saw before, Mesavar has five dimensions and one dimension for KPIs. So, in this chapter, we present uh, 10 elements for each dimension. So we arrive to 50 elements and there is plus some indicators for the KPIs. Well, in the last chapter, chapter three, we, uh, we list the recommendations, some good practices. It was very good that someone, that someone asked it about it. So Listo Partners had the opportunity to bring together 10 recommendations for making universities more entrepreneurial. So this is, this is what is presented here to you. In addition, we supplement with a number of good practices thank, taken from, from us, from our partners. So where to find it. So this is too, too good to be uh, true. So you, the toolkit is already available in English and will also be available in Spanish and in Portuguese, as you can see. 
uh, just browse to the list web page and download it. The, the, the address is in the screen for you. Well, this is the, the toolkit. I would like to give a special thanks to Philip, the great organizer of this big project, to all the members uh, and the whole team. We, we as, a, as the team that uh, helped to organize this, the, the, this, all these books, we would like to give a special thanks to take Jake Riddor, Riddor, sorry for my English. He's from Uppsala University. Uh, he did the revision and edition of this publication. Also, we would like to thank Icaro Soriano from UFPE, who is the designer of this incredible and beautiful publication. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Liliani. Um, so as the next slide, um, these are the list of publications. Capacity building projects are by definition very practical and applied. It's about the activities that you do together, but they're also a great opportunity to publish about the results that we have. And within the list of projects, we have three different publications. Um, the first one is about university industry collaboration, about the AIM Day methodology. The second one is a teacher handbook about a virtual international classroom that we developed. And the last one is the list of toolkit, uh, which is really looking at the bigger picture of the whole topic. Uh, at the moment, when you go to the Lister website, you find um, the three English versions, the Spanish and um, the Portuguese ones will follow in a couple of days. Uh, this is because we still need to get the approval for the ISBN numbers. From the Lister side, uh, we are ready to, to share that with you. These three publications have a lot of authors and contributors, I would say between 60 and 70 people who have co contributed to this. So this is a lot of people who made this possible. It was a team effort. Um, nevertheless, I would like briefly mention just by forename a couple of the people who were really important in the last steps. You're all academics, you know that publishing is a lot of work and just having a final version of the draft is not enough. There's a lot of steps that come afterwards. So very briefly, I would like to credit Laura, Leticia, Maggie, Adriana, Solange, Roberto, Sergio, Icaro, Jake, Olga, and Carolina, who were involved in these last steps before we can actually launch the publications. Uh, this is all done by the Listo project team, and you're all very fantastic. So thanks a lot for this collaboration in the last three years uh, that lead to these uh, publications as a result that we can share uh, with the world. If you would like to find out more about the project, um, this is our website. We have an Instagram account, and you can also find us on Twitter and LinkedIn um, as a way to, to get in touch with us and uh, to find out more. Listo as a project, as we said, is ending now. It was a three-year project, and it ends officially next week on October 14th. Listo as a collaboration between the partners will continue. So in this sense, this is not the final goodbye, but another milestone in our collaboration and it's important to finish and today we finish a webinar series of three webinars with the presentation of the publications um, thank you very much for joining us uh, we hope this was interesting for you and the publications that we mentioned are an excellent way to stay in touch with us and read more and about find out about the Lister group thank you very much um, and uh, goodbye <laughs>